Hi again and good morning and um Yeah, sabi kasi na pastor, uh, being a light. So nakalight po ako ngayon. It's something new and um, I'm I'm going out of my comfort zone. Kasi medyo mahirap sa camera if I'm wearing dark. But you will see my closet ano, puro dark pa rin. But anyway, yeah, 25 years. We will be celebrating next week, uh, next Sunday, right? And uh, I'm so glad that I've been a part of this church for uh, a decade now. Because I started attending late 2009. And then um, mostly, uh, talagang nag-start po ako to serve um, early 2010. And I remember April when Andrew was here. Um, I accepted yung pung talagang bukal na bukal sa akin. <laughs> and um, th the only intention that I have is to just accept God and Jesus in my life. So, yeah, thank you for uh, the, the, the decade that I've, and more, more years to come that I will be spending here at Followers of Christ. So, yeah. Um, and um, in spite of whatever is happening for 25 years, there are many challenges, disappointments loss, ups and downs, and pain. But still, ito po yung Christian life here on earth, right? So we will face all those things. But James reassures us in chapter 1, verse 12, that blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen? So we will keep on moving. Diba? Kaya po sabi dito is we're on the move. This church is on the move. Regardless, whatever is happening, may COVID man o wala, may big celebration man o wala, right? We will be on the move. Amen? So yeah. So today po, uh, since uh, we're talking about uh, being on the move and our main verse for the anniversary is on Philippians um, 3, verse 12 to 14. And a part of it, uh, Joy already shared last week about um, this verse and about thanksgiving. And he talks about um, uh, being thankful at the past, right? And then, but don't dwell on it. Just learn from it, right? And now we're going to talk about the present. Like what I've said, may COVID or wala, we will still be moving as a church, as an individual. And we will see it. So like Pony Paul, when he wrote this, um, this passage, and um, yeah, but before we do it, uh, may I ask everyone to bow our heads and we will pray. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We just want to lift you up and honor you, Lord, through our lives. And we want to give it all to you, Father. Lord, we pray that uh, upon hearing the word of God, we will receive it fully, Father. And not just receive it, but apply it in our lives. And may we stand on your truth, on your word. Because this is our firm foundation. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you have given me. And may I just share, Lord, your truth. Nothing more, nothing less. Father, we just want to honor you and praise you. In the mighty and precious name of your son, Jesus, this we pray. Amen. So yeah, let's look at Philippians 3, verse 12 to 14. I will read it on King James, King James Version. It says here, Okay na po. I'll give you time to open your Bibles. And if you're okay, I will read it on King James Version. It says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, and if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I couldn't I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So just a, a brief background of this passage. When Apostle Paul wrote this, he was in prison. Paul was not sure what would happen to him. On one hand, he knew that his death was a real possibility so he tried to prepare his friends on Philippi for the worst. On the other hand, he had some level of expectation that he would survive. 
So he encouraged them to hope for the best. The Apostle Paul gives this church his personal testimony. Paul was never one to let circumstances conquer him. Rather, with the help of God, he was determined to fulfill his God-given purpose. And in this text, Paul's attitude, dedication, determination shines through in a powerful way. He provides a strategy for the Philippian church. And as they move forward to become the best that they could be for Christ, rather than be complacent with where they were, and they needed to set their sights higher. And these words from Apostle Paul are still relevant until now, as we are facing different kinds of trials as an individual and as a church. As men and women of God who have different perspectives, needs, and desires, if we are to run this race with patience, we will need a strategy. There are so many things that claim our attention and so many goals to reach until it's difficult to stay focused in these confusing times. So the question is, how can we reach our potential for Christ? How can we give it our best? How can we stay focused during these difficult times? So the answer is, always be on the move. Apostle Paul set a good example on how to succeed in the Christian race. He ran his race with a wholehearted commitment and gave every effort to win Christ. So he understood the high price to be paid, to be paid because he was paying it himself. It will take diligence and exertion to attain what God desires for them and for every one of us. But the price is worth the effort. Many of us, in the body of Christ, become motivated and excited about our future and destiny. And we make bold declarations of faith about who we are and when, where we are going, but many fails to reach our goals in life because we have no strategy for success. We stop moving. We, don't, we, we think that we already did our part. So our goal of becoming the best Christ-like disciples we can for kingdom of God will be challenged. So like what Paul demonstrated in this passage, in, in spite of what he is going through, even though he's in prison, he still have the hope that is coming from God. And he wants to encourage the Philippian church that uh, are, are currently struggling that time because um, they are not, they, they're, they've been complacent, they've been stagnant. So he wants to Encourage the Philippian church to do the same thing as they go through um, those difficult times. So now, it says here that our goal of becoming the best Christ-like disciples, we can for kingdom of God will be challenged on how and by who. Right? In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So if we let the devil overcome us, even though he was already defeated, and we were deceived that, into the thinking that he has a hold on our lives, then we're in big trouble. And that's what Apostle Paul demonstrated here, that in spite of, in spite of us being in a COVID, in spite of the limitations, in spite of whatever is happening in us, laid off, being laid off at work, right? Um, whatever it is we're going through, in the midst of those troubles, there's a strategy that we can use to overcome and be successful, and that's being on the move always. So, as we have said, we have an adversary, Satan, who desires to stop our progress. We are challenged by Satan who war against us, and he tries to make us think that we are defeated. But no, we are, or we are already victorious in Christ, what he has done on the cross 2,000 years ago. So let's stick into that mentality that Satan cannot defeat us. But uh, upon, upon think, putting that into our mind, we need to also practice it in our lives. So... 
we must have a workable strategy in order to overcome him. We are challenged by our own limitations. All of us had limitations, but limitations do not have the power to rob us of success if we have a, work, a workable strategy. So I believe Paul offers us a workable strategy in this passage. Like games, right? When, when we watch games, they are won or lost through a strategy. Who likes gaming there? Diba? Ako po, mahilig sa gaming, obviously. Diba? So, yeah. Even on sports, they use this strategy to win. Right? Uh, Lakers fan, right? A free throw is as important as three-point line or a dunk. Right? In football, uh, a goal is as important as a touchdown. Right? And sa baseball po, a blunt can be as just important as a home run. So, the difference is the strategy that we're using. If we keep on moving in the midst of these trials, in, this, in the midst of tribulation, persecution, then we will attain the success and we will win the race. So, every child of God should be striving for excellence to fulfill our God-given purpose is the greatest desire. If you and I are going to be successful in running this Christian race, that is to live a purpose, obtain a good report, and desired results, we must have a strategy. Ano ba tong strategy na sinasabi ni Mab? And we'll talk about it later. So, sometimes there are things in our lives that hinder us from pursuing this race. And we think that we are not able because of these three main factors. So ito po, um, we always think about these things. These things hinder us from, from exploding, from being committed to a certain ministry, from being committed for the work of the Lord. So these three factors, I think I will discuss just three, but there's more, but these are the three main factors. So first, um, we think we are not one... Um, we are stuck with our past. The second one is, we think we are not capable. And then the third one is, we think we're not one of them or we're left out. So the, the idea is that Paul labored as a debtor to Christ, not because he wants to outdo what Christ did, but because he was overcome with love and appre appreciation that Christ saved him and called him and decided to use him in his service. That's what we are trying to, to, to say, that when you understand the grace of God, you will be compelled to do his works. Paul, po, si Paul po dito, hindi niya ina-outdo si God because it's, it's never going to happen. Kahit anong gawin natin, whatever we want to do, or even we give our best, we can never outdo God. Kahit magpapako pa tayo dun sa cruz. We are not perfect at first days, di ba? Simula, bago pa tayo mapanganak, we have this sin nature. So how can we outdo God? How, how can we outdo what Christ did on the cross? So, in short, we can't. So, even Paul, he openly confessed that he had less natural talent, less natural ability, and through, uh, though his speech was rude, he was able to accomplish more than all the other apostles. So Paul learned how to maximize the moment. He learned how to labor more often, to be more productive, and get more results. So how could this apostle accomplish so much wherein he was not a good speaker, and with homely appearance, and besides, he, have, uh, he had some serious obstacle. So, meron tayong konting background about kay Paul. So, if we have those excuses in our lives that we are not capable because of our past, oh, I, uh, I did this, that's why I don't want to go near Lord or whatever you're doing in church. I need to fix myself first. I need to do it right first. Hindi. This is the, may, um, the best example how grace works in our lives. And um, you will hear dito po yung example why Paul 
was able to do a lot wherein meron din siyang mga pinagdadaanan. And sometimes it's just our excuses. Right? We are being hindered of what God wants us to do to us because of our excuses. So now, if, if you, we have that kind of mentality, so pakinggan po natin to. I will give three, three, um, three uh, ano po, characteristic ni Paul. So first, he had a dark history. Bakit? Paul persecuted the church. Right? Church of God in public. He arrested believers and testified against them. His reputation was well known for wreaking havoc in the church. Even after his conversation to Christ, he was originally rejected by the other apostles because they were afraid of him. Remember? Nag, nag, nagsasorry na siya, lumapit na siya. But still, the apostles denied him. That's why umalis po siya, di ba? So, if we're talking about past, Ito pong past ni Paul, he was a murderer of believers and an enemy of God. Di ba? But still, God chooses Paul to be used for his kingdom and glory. So Paul had a history, a dark past, and his friends were few, his enemies were many, and suffering was a lot. But still, he was successful in running the Christian race. So if we're talking about our past, Kung po tayo mag, if we, kung pag-usapan po ang past dito, kukulangin po tayo ng mga, yung three hours natin sa service. Kung yung mga kalokohan ng pag-uusapan. Di ba? Kung yung mga pinagagagawa natin sa past. But, hindi po yung tinitignan ni Lord. Right? Hindi po yun yung factor bakit ka gagamitin ni Lord. It's your willingness to be used by God. So, The second one would be, he had a weak presentation. Oh, so, so, those, so those, to those people who are saying, oh, I cannot explain it well, I don't have this, yung, yung PR ba? Uh, I don't have the courage to stand up in front. Ako nga po, hanggang ngayon, I'm nervous about doing this. But it's, it's all about the grace of God. If he asks you to move, you move. Diba? So, he had a weak presentation. In First and Second Corinthians, Paul attempted to justify being called an apostle. Nung una po, nire-reject siya because of what, uh, what his background is. Diba? Sino ba naman ang tatawag ng apostle sa kanya wherein he was the one who was persecuting the church at first place? So, he was being rejected and pinatuna, gusto niyang ipatunayan to. He wants to justify it. If you read 1 and 2 Corinthians, maraming sinabi si Paul doon about it. And um, he said he was not a great speaker, but Paul referred to his speech, oh, nawala. to his speech, and, oh, Paul referred to his speech as rude, uncouth, unpolished, not smooth, or eloquent. So, his physical appearance was weak. Imagine niyo, ano yung tura ni Paul? Try to imagine what, what Paul looks like that time, right? And his eyes were diseased. He really did not measure up to the other apostles in appearance nor presentation. So, Paul, Paul had a great message of truth, but weak delivery. So, hindi po ito base kung anong itsura mo on how you will present. It's based on the truth. If you share the truth, regardless how you deliver it, it will move by itself. The power of God, the Word of God has its own to move. Hindi po ito pagandahan ng presentation. It's just about us being willing to, to share the Word of God, the truth. Right? So, Paul had a great message of truth, but a weak delivery. Peter was more robust, and Apollos was eloquent, but Paul was different. So, Another one is, he was born out of due season. Some, um, now overwhelmed po sila or sometimes they don't wanna, they don't wanna be part of the ministry because, oh, I'm not one of them. Uh, maybe masyado na sila matured. 
you already categorize yourself on the downside of, of, of whatever yung pong measurement ninyo. But hindi. As what Paul um, described himself, he is one born out of due season. Bakit? Because he was never there when Jesus Christ was here. Right? The apostles, the disciples were there uh, with Jesus with, uh, during the ministry time. And yung mga miracles, they, 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 were, they were able to see, uh, witness, and what, whatever Jesus did. They were beside him. But Paul, he, he, he was born again when Jesus was already, um, when he already died. And yun nga po yung divine intervention ba na nung na, na born again siya, di ba? Out of yung, yung revelation is not, uh, out of dun sa nagpakita si Jesus sa kanya, right? So, he was not in the company of Jesus during the, his earth ministry and he did not mis- witness the miracles of Jesus. Yet, his ministry was more successful. He expanded the kingdom of God and he established more churches. And he wrote thirds, uh, two-thirds of the New Testament books of the Bible. So, eh, hindi pa po ba tayo, aren't we encouraged of what we're hearing? If we think that we're not capable, if we think that we're not, we don't belong, if we think that um, we have a dark past, so ano pong palagay nyo on what Paul has? And yet, he was used mightily by God for his kingdom. So any one of us as a church, as an individual, we can be used by God. It's just a matter of us, of the willingness that we can give and how much we are committed when God called us. So I'm talking about the strategy a while ago, being on the move. Diba? So, so now that we know the situation ni Paul that time when he wrote the Philippian, this Philippian verse and what kind of first, uh, person he is, now we want to know what drives him to do all these things. Drives him to be always on the move and finish the race, the work the Lord has given to him. So I want to share four things now. Being on the move means, number one, Keep growing in grace through the means of grace. Paul had a willingness to confess his shortcoming. Not as though, dun po sa verse, it says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but in pursuit of excellence, Paul recognized that he had not arrived yet. Anyone who strives for excellence must have a willingness to confess their shortcoming and admits that there's room for improvement. It's hard to move forward when you feel like you have already arrived. In our lives, there are some things that God alone has to do in us, but there are other things that we must do for ourselves. We cannot do God's part, and God will not, uh, and God will not do our part as well. But a willingness to admit and confess our shortcoming is an indication that we recognize a room for improvement. And before we can disciple others, we must submit to discipline ourselves. Diba? So if we have this mentality of ab- admitting that we have shortcomings, that we're not perfect, we're just saying that it's God's grace who is moving in our lives. We're not being self-righteous. Right? And all the glory is, all the gro- glory is being being pointed towards God. So whatever we are doing, we know that God is moving because if we know that we, we arrive on that spot that where we can do everything, I don't think we will need God. Right? Kasi po, pag kaya na natin gawin lahat, we won't depend on God anymore. And yun po yung nangyayari sa ibang tao when they have everything, when things are going well, when they're earning a lot, when they are on top of, of the business or whatever, the corporate ladder that they want to achieve, nawawala si God. But here, Paul demonstrates how he accepted his shortcomings in spite of his pursuit of excellence. 
And then, in Proverbs 25, verse 28, it says, Like a city that is broken, broken into and without walls is a man who has no control over his spirit. So, sabi po, before we can discipline others, we must submit to discipline ourselves. So now, ito po, if we are going to be successful in running this race, we must have control over our own spirit. So controlling our spirit, emotions, and intellect requires discipline. So we must discipline our mind. It says on Proverbs 23, verse 7, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we must discipline our will as well. Will to obey the word of God in every area of our lives. And we must discipline our emotions and take authority over how we feel. Right? Hindi po natin pwedeng hayaan yung mundo na mag-dictate sa atin or other people will dictate how we feel or who we are. If we want to, to, to finish this race, we must, we must discipline ourselves. And it starts in us. And who we are in God and where he we, where he placed us right so uh, we we must discipline our bodies as well aray ko right yung mga bodybuilder diyan yung mga fitness ano fitness guru uh, it says uh, lagpasan na kaya natin yun <laughs> it says we must discipline our bodies take care of our physical vessels because we cannot be effective if we don't have a healthy body. Kasi po, ito pa po yung ginagamit natin right now. Coming from me talaga, eh, no? But it's the Word of God. Wala po tayo magagawa doon. So, it just shows that I'm learning as well. So, it says, um, take care of our physical vessel. If we do our part, God will do the rest. God will finish what He had started. In Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he, is the, he will perfect us until he comes. So F Paul had the willingness to keep growing, and we should too. Too many, too many Christians graduate from church. Thinking that they have done their part. Sometimes we can, we can be on that thinking as well, especially pag matanda na tayo, but it never stops. As long as we have breath, as long as the grace of God is moving in our lives, we will keep moving and moving and moving. Right? But until we are here on earth, uh, we will grow more. Our Christian life never stops until we hear the words, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Yun po yung gusto nating marinig. So, wag po nating sabihin, matanda ka na, hindi na ako pwede dyan. I've been there for the longest time. No. God has a perfect spot for you to be used in this kingdom. Meron po kayong magagawa na hindi namin magagawang mga bata. And meron kaming magagawa na hindi nyo magagawang matatanda. It's just a matter of we are placed uniquely so we can be effective on where we are right now. Right? So tayo pong lahat, we are important sa kingdom ni God. And hindi pa tayo graduate. Hanggat nandito tayo, it's still ongoing. That's why we should be always on the move. Wow, ang bilis. Mukhang maagad tayong uwi ngayon. Ha? So that's my first point. It says, keep growing in grace through the means of grace. Right? We accepted Jesus by grace and we will live our lives by grace as well. Hindi po tayo pwede maging self-proud. Kaya nga not by our own works so that no one can boast. Di ba? So anything that we do, we do it for the glory of God. And ito po yung sinasabi ng Bible. And this is how how Paul did it in spite of what he is going through. Because he understands the grace God has given. 
'di ba? Tulad nga nung inintro ko kanina, he is la- laboring as a debtor. Para po siyang ano, parang kumbaga meron akong utang na loob sa so I will do. Kung ano, someone save me. Um between life and death. Syempre, you will give your best just to do whatever that 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 person needs or kung anong may pay back mo right but dito yung action ni Paul ganun but he's not thinking about outpaying God he's thinking of the grace he was overwhelmed right so let's move forward my second point would be keep following Christ and Christ likeness so Paul developed a certainty of aim Diba? Sabi dun sa verse, but I follow after, if that I may um, apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Meron ako narinig sa CHB and it says, when you shoot, you aim. But sometimes, people want it easy. So what they will do, they will shoot first and then go to the, to the yung bullet mark and then they will... Put the target there. It's bullseye. So whoever sees that, oh, na bullseye niya. But that's not how God wants it. He wants us to aim and then shoot. Because through aiming, there's focus. Right? So now, sabi niya, what are you following after? What are you aiming towards? Do you have a single-minded target? O isa lang din po tayo dun sa babaril tayo and then we'll, we will draw the target. Or we're focused on that one goal. Are you certain? A certainty of aim has to do with life focus. The things we are pursuing. And it Paul says, I have found my calling and I am in hot pursuit of fulfilling my purpose. Ganito po ba tayo? Do we have this hot pursuit of fulfilling our purpose? And do we know our purpose? Di ba? So now, we should have this, this focus po and aim towards what God wants us to do. And um, sabi niya, I know God, uh, what God wants me to do and I spend my time, my energy, my resources and strength in the pursuit of the purpose. Ito po yung ginawa ni Paul. He's so focused on what God wants him to do that everything that he has, ip- ipinot up niya doon. ba? Diba? So, it says fulfilling the purpose of, uh, of God was Paul's passion, obviously. You won't be, you know, um, yung pong lahat ng naranasan ni Paul in the, in, in the Bible as you read, Right? Yung pong um, na shipwreck siya, he is being beaten, he was being stoned, di ba? And then he was in prison for so many times. Obviously, obviously um, Paul has the passion to do what God says to, for him to do. So, it was what he lived for and what is driving... So, the question is, what is driving passion of your life? What keeps you awake at night that you always think of? So there are so many things that claim our attention that we must have certainty of aim. At the end of the day, minsan ang dami po natin iniisip. We have a lot of stuff going on in our lives. Especially now, just nung pong pagbalik ng mga bata sa school, right? Uh, mga parents who have uh, kids going back to school. Yung mas, ang dami-dami yung iniisip. Right? Just when this COVID started, yung trabaho natin. Right? We're all thinking about this. But what God wants you to do? Are we still focused on that? And are we aiming that goal? So, be careful on what you spend your time with. And, nawala. Only what you do for Christ will last. Again, uliting, uliting po. Only what you do for Christ will last. Anything that we do that is not about Christ is just temporary. 
Di ba? We are laying up our treasures in heaven. Whatever we get here, it's just temporary. Yeah, for a while we will, hap- we will be happy, we will enjoy. But what is more important to you? Where is your aim? Where is your po- focus? Where is your time? Right? So the third point, um, again, the second, fo- second point is keep following Christ and Christ-likeness. To be like Christ. As Christians, we want to be like Christ. Hindi natin makukuha exactly habang nandito tayo, but there, pare-pareho na po tayo. Right? Our goal is to be the closest version of Christ while here on earth. So, yeah, the third point would be keep control of your mind. Paul was very selective about his thought life. There were some things he chose to remember and others he chose to forget. So, it says in the verse, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Tulad po nung sinabi ni Joy dati na uh, last Sunday about our past, we can give thanks on what happened, what happened. But we shouldn't be dwelling on it. But we shouldn't be standing on the past. Either naging successful ka po or hindi. Because if you're standing there or dwell on it, you won't move forward. Right? Be, mo- being on the move is moving forward. Right? It's good that it happened. But somehow it builds us to who we are right now. And let's just be thankful. Either it's negative or positive. Still, God uses it. Sabi nga nung kanta, you take what the enemy is meant for evil and you turn it for good. And it, anything that is the enemy is throwing at us, diba? God can turn it into good. So, sabi niya, Satan has a way of bringing up our past failures, mistakes, and sins. If I'm going to think about my past, I wouldn't be standing here. Diba? Kahit I, I don't think meron pong, meron pong ano dito, deserving na tumayo dito if we're gonna talk about past. Right? But yun nga, yun po yung gustong mangyari ni Satan. He has a way of bringing up our, fa- our past in our, in, in our mind. And he tries to condemn us with the mistakes of the past. Diba? Sabi nga sa Bible, there is no condemnation in Christ. We shouldn't be condemned because He already forgiven us. So let's let us not be let's select like what Paul did be selective in our thought life. Diba? So Paul chose to remember his past and all God done to prepare him to for, fulfill, for fulfilling his purpose. His past mistakes became his constant testimony. That's what we can do with our past. That it may become a testimony for others to hear. And for them to see God's grace in our life. Diba? So, Paul's attitude in the past was real and it happened. Hindi naman po niya dinideny yon. Mistakes were made and he is sorry for that. But he, uh, Paul says, I have prevented and forsook my sin. It's over and I am covered by the blood of Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he took everything. Our past, our present, and our future. So, ito po ang pinanghawakan ni Paul that I am covered by the blood of Jesus. And whatever my past is, diba? even though he was rejected by the apostles, by the disciples, still, he knows that he was already forgiven by Jesus. So, the old soul is dead and he is a new creature in Christ Jesus. So, he is forgiven and he is delivered. Like us, we are already forgiven and we are already delivered and redeemed by Christ. So, yung pong mga thought life natin about the past, our mistakes, wag natin hayaang mangibabaw yon. Let us not, uh, don't let it surface in your mind because it wouldn't help you. Otherwise, same thing as this church, kung, kung iisipin lang ang nangyari sa past, diba? hindi tayo abutin ng 25 years. Right? But we want to be always on the move. Like Paul showed us in this scripture. 
So, um, so all things that Paul thought could say before, uh, then there were some things Paul chose to forget. And all things that Paul thought could save before Christ, he chose to forget. His credentials. Kung alam po natin yung background ni Paul, right? He has good credentials as well. As a matter of fact, nung pong bago siya born again, he knows the, 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 the scriptures. Diba? Kasi pinag-aralan niya. So, um, his credentials of being born of stock of Israel, um, of the tribe of Benjamin, he's from the tribe of Benjamin, an Hebrew of the Hebrews, he was circumcised on the eighth day, and then um, course, uh, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, and touching the righteousness which is in the law and blameless. So ito po yung finorget ni Paul. Diba? We cannot dwell on those things. Let's just put our focus on what is right, uh, where we are right now and what God wants us to do. So he chose to forget all those credentials and ito po yung tinandaan niya. This is what, what um, Apostle Paul put in his mind. That Jesus came, Jesus suffered, He bled and died for the penalty for the sins of the world. And He chose to trust Christ alone for salvation, forgiveness, and redemption. Yun po yung mga choices na ginawa ni Paul of his thought life. So, upon controlling our mind, let's choose what we should remember and what we should forget. Let's remember what God did on that cross so that yung pong grace will overflow in us. Amen? So my last point would be keep focus on your assignment. It says, Paul concentrated in his effort on pressing towards the mark. It says on the verse, this one thing I do, reaching forth unto those which are before and I press towards the mark for the price of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul seems to realize that his assignment was personal. He could not be like anyone else. Tulad po ng sinabi ko kanina, we're all created unique. We cannot be someone like, if you want to be, oh, sana ako si Pastor Randy, or ganun ako kagaling tumugtog, kamukha ni ganyan. Right? But we were created unique. Diba? He realized that he could not be like anyone else and he could not do everything. So he could not reach everybody and everywhere and all the time. So he's focused in one thing only. The one thing that he was called to do and did well and he would do. He maximized his results through a focused effort. And if the enemy cannot discourage us from our God-given assignment, he will try to overload us or distract us from our assignment. Minsan po, if we are so focused on a lot of things, mawawala po yung focus natin dun sa gusto mangyari ni Lord sa buhay natin. And sometimes, we tend to pursue those things rather than what God wants us to pursue. So, again, if we are not focused on that that's the scheme of the enemy. Sabi nga ni, ni John Bevere, it's the bait of Satan, deception. If, if I cannot uh, distract you with your focus, then I will give you more, more stuff. Related sa ginagawa mo. Now you have a lot of choice. Diba? Pag nasa buffet tayo, unlike pag nag-order ka, you're set on that one meal. But if you're on the buffet, you gusto mo lahat kainin. At pagkatapos nun, masakit ang tiyan mo sa katakawan natin. Right? If we're focused on that one thing, we will give all our effort and we will be uh, effective on that one thing. So, maximize po natin yung sarili natin. And we're not stretched out. Remember yung preaching ni Joy na yung rubber band? The more it gets stretched out, it gets weaker. Right? The more you pull the rubber band, hanggang sa dumating yung point na it's gonna break, then yun na. So, often the enemy's most effective weapons against servants of God are distraction, discouragement, busyness, and burnout. 
Kung sino man pong nakakaramdam nun doon sa mga sinabi ko, then ito po yung gawin natin. Keep focus on our assignment. Yung pong binigay ni Lord sa atin. And looking around at others may distract and discourage us. Trying to do many things will overload us and rob us from our effectiveness. So we must give ourselves to the one thing we are called to do. And overload hands are ineffective hands. We must give ourselves to the one... Th- uh, Paul clearly understood his call and he gave himself to the one thing, preaching the gospel of the Lord Christ. And he preached Jesus and him being crucified. He preached to the Gentiles and places where the gospel had not been preached. And he had one goal and one purpose and one desire, that he may win Christ. Look at the strategy Paul did. Dahil meron nang gumagawa nito, ito yung gagawin ko. Right? Paul preached to the Gentile, and then he preached the, 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 yung pong nangyari kay Jesus, and then to the places that the apostles haven't reached yet. Diba? Huwag na tayong sumiksik doon. Meron nang gumagawa doon. Right? Let us be effective, you know, in the place that God put us. Where you are planted, that's where you will grow. Iba? So, wag po tayong, wag na tayong maki, makisama pa dun sa ano. Because God has a, has, has, has a big plan for you. Where you are right now, that's where uh, God wants you to be. And if we are willing to listen, to commit, to submit, then we will pursue yung pong greatest pur- purpose in our lives, that we may win Christ, like what Apostle Paul wants to. So again, yung pong first point natin is keeping, uh, keep growing in grace through the means of grace. The second one would be keep following Christ and Christ-likeness. The third one is Keep control of your mind. And the last one is keep focus on your assignment. So, to conclude, being on the move is an act of Christian. We have been saved by grace through faith in order to bear fruit. We cannot bear fruit if we're stuck on one spot. We cannot win the race if we stop moving. So, ito po yung buhay kristyano. This is what God wants us to be, always on the move, pursuing the things that He put before us. So we will regret no amount of effort toward that end because as long as we are rooted in faith and driven by grace and joy, there is a prize for each of God's children to be received at the dawn of new heavens and earth when He are judged according to our righteousness in Christ and rewarded for our works done in His name. Anything that we put, uh, uh, anything that we do in His name for Him will not be put in vain. Diba? We might not get the, the, the reward here on earth. Diba? Kasi minsan we chase those things here on earth. That's why we, we stop moving on God's plan and we, we, we stay where we are because it's comfortable. We have what we, 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 have what we want. Diba? But God wants us to move more, move forward. Tulad nga po nung, sabi niya dito, we are not perfect. We still have a lot to learn. And sometimes we will fail in our efforts. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can press on and seek to be the people that we're created to be. And as we stop looking back and start looking forward to what lies ahead. Ito po yung plan ni Lord sa atin. And as the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, we are not our own. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are His. And He will keep on helping us by His grace to do His will until that day when He returns. Ito po yung tandaan natin. Uulitin ko, we are not our own. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are His. And He will keep on helping us by His grace to do His will until the day when He returns. 
So let us all be on the move in order for us to finish the race and the work that the Lord has set us set for us. So I want to close in this verse in Philippians 3, verse 15 to 16. It says, uh, in message version, uh, version, it says, So let's keep focus on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, and if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. And you'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Like followers of Christ for 25 years, there are things that happened in the past, things that are happening in the present, and things will happen in the future. But this church will not stop moving. We're always on the move. And not just this, this organization, but the church that is found within you. We will move as a church. We will move as an individual. And we will move all for the glory of God. Amen? So this is our main, um, our main aim, our main goal, is to finish the race. And in order for us to finish the race, we will keep on moving and moving. God is on the move, and we, we are on the move as well. Amen? So let, let's stand up and let's pray. Tayo po tayo. Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, we thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for this um, passage that we have talked about. Thank you for the writings of Paul, and thank you that we, are, we have been inspired. Though it was, it was um, written to the Philippian, Philippian church, Lord, but still, it is applicable to us as well. We are thankful, Lord, for the revelation, and we will stand on your truth. And as we, as we know, Lord, more about you, your calling, your purpose in our lives, Lord, may we be always on the move. Father, we just want to lift you up and glorify you in our lives as we offer them as a living sacrifice for you. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, that you are always there. Thank you for your provision and protection. And thank you, Lord, that you will continue to be with us until the day that you will come. We just want to honor you and praise you in a mighty and precious name. And the name above every other name, the name of Jesus, this we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Paul, and have a blessed week. Praise God. Well, let us remain standing. Thank you, Mav, for the word. Thank you for those powerful points that you have shared to us. And it's not just for uh, the specific uh, churches or local churches, those uh, messages, but it is also for us as individuals. And I don't think we will be able to move as a church if we are not going to be moving individually in our walk with God. Because a lot of people, a lot of believers, they, got, they miss a lot from God. It wasn't because His fault, but because we just allowed ourselves to remain on our past issues for decades, for a very long time. And sometimes we are wondering, why I'm, am I not progressing in life? Why is it that I am not moving? Well, I'm not saying you're not doing anything. Just being, being busy doesn't mean you are being productive. We're, we're, all being, we're all busy. We never stop moving. But the thing in terms of our relationship with God individually and as a church, you know, um, if we have certain issues that we haven't dealt with, and that's why I like the first point, grow in the grace. Because I believe if you... Learn more about the grace of God. You will be able to deal with those issues that you have in the past. And some of you, the reason you are not moving, you get stuck, and there are a lot of things that is holding you back, is because you think you're not worthy, you're not qualified, and you're thinking about your past. Everybody has past. And in the future, we'll still have our past. Why? Because we will make mistakes. And if you are living that way, being controlled, with your mistakes and your failures, then you, will not, you won't be able to move to the things that God has for you. And you know, we've missed a lot. 
individually in us, also as a church. So we need to deal those uh, issues. And I, they've already been dealt with, but we need to make a decision. Okay, Lord, I thank you because I am forgiven. And when you are forgiven, don't dwell, don't leave, don't remain. Get unstuck and then you will move forward. Always get excited on what God has for you at present. And you're getting excited at present. And the more the future will become brighter and brighter. And there will be great things will be happening. So why don't we uh, bow our heads and just lift our hands before the Lord and give Him praise. Uh, to where He brought us. From where we were. And where we are at right now in our walk with God. Let's give Him praise right now. And even for those of you who are watching, just join us. It's just a few seconds. Give me praise. And just say with your mouth, Lord, I'm not going to live and dwell and remain in my past. And there are a lot of things that have happened that are good, not necessarily bad. But I'm not dwelling on those. And even on my past mistakes, Lord, I'm not going to dwell on those. I am going to be excited at what you are doing right now at present. This is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice and be glad. Lord, your steadfast love, they are new every morning. So, Father, we are so thankful. Because we are not going to miss those good things that you have for us. If we are living and excited about the present. Lord, you are always, not only God, that you, are, that you are the God of the past, but also at present and in the future. You never change. So, Father, we give you praise. Individually, what you have done to us, to our family. And, Lord, collectively, as a church, we thank you for your faithfulness and for your greatness. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the incredible things that you have done through this local church. Thank you, Lord, for those people who came to know you, people who grew in their faith, discipled, Lord, baptized. And, Lord, those people who had an encounter with you through this local church, we thank you. A lot of people got healed and delivered, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we are so thankful. It is not because of what we have done. It's because we just kept moving and Lord, by us moving and taking a step of faith, and you move through us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And we will see more happening, Lord, in the future. Because we still believe we are your followers. We are the followers of Christ, the anointed one, who went about doing good and healing those who were oppressed of the devil. Lord, a lot of people are oppressed are being attacked by the enemy. But Lord, we are your church. Thank you, Lord. You have used us and are using us and will continue to use us. We're still on the move with you, Lord Jesus. You never stop and we won't stop. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, thank you for coming and for joining us today. And uh, God bless you, and we would like you to share the link again uh, with your friends so that they can, uh, if ever they, they missed it, so that they can watch it. And that was one incredible message. Thank you, Maverick, for sharing that. And don't, uh, don't forget to, you know, participate and invite your friends about the, the trivia giveaways that we have. Okay, and don't forget also to order your... your, your you know, apparel, your, okay? So God bless you all. For those of you who are watching, thank you for tuning in with us. And we'll see you again next Sunday for our final celebration, our 25th year anniversary. God bless you wherever you are and whichever place or country you are watching. We, uh, we appreciate you staying with us today. God bless you.